aggressive and prosperous uh, African in West Africa who was involved in palm oil trade and he had ships and uh, trade in palm oil uh, in Europe and South America. So he came up with this uh, term, I mean the uh, idea of an 1873 concept, which also happens to be uh, years before the Berlin Conference when Africa was partitioned. So he thought, uh, I think correctly so, that we must invest in this idea of an Africa that was, but is not is, mm. and where we can aspire to build uh, a continent uh, indivisible uh, because of your birth or because of your structure, mm. because of your, uh, your gifts. So, so this is the kind of Africa that we then mm. decided, but with a particular focus on the role of companies mm. and the role of their actors. Because we have two companies are juristic persons, mm -hmm. and we also have human beings in their natural self who are the actors themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, connecting the two and uh, being able to see the things we take for granted, uh, infrastructure, uh, food, and the changes that have taken place because of the human mind, mm -hmm. and the knowledge that we all didn't bring gold in place, into existence or minerals into existence, but someone gave them for free. All we do in life is convert, and we convert some of these gifts of God into materials that we use for convenience. But we actually are not creators of anything, including life. So it then led us to look at the values, what kind of values would then inform this kind of uh, initiative. One of the values is what uh, Tinash was talking about, which is that all men are created equal and are endowed with a certain un unalienable rights, and including life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That all these rights are not given by men, by government. They are given for free. So if you're human, you have life. And we then organize ourselves, uh, create governments uh, to protect those rights, not to give them. So when you have a government saying, I'll give you life, I'll give you happiness, and it's not the happiness that we were looking at, it's a pursuit of happiness. Of happiness. Yes. Do you, do you believe that there should be a special relationship between the people of Africa and its leadership and the African-American constituency in America and in the, in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, uh, and so on. I say so <coughs> uh, because if you look at uh, if you look at Israel, yeah. there is um, a, a Jewish congregation which is yeah. extremely strong as a lobby group yeah. wherever they exist in the world. Yeah. Do you feel that there should be that affinity between us as a people uh, in the diaspora? There are two views. I think the, the founder, the originator of the 1873 net, uh, name, uh, I think the, the thinking uh, he had, or he still has, is that it must be a Pan-African uh, movement. But uh, uh, what I believe is not the same. I believe differently that when you look at an apple, uh, the skin need not be the same. But inside is an apple. Mm. That humanity is not divisible by geography. So Africa belongs to all who live in it. It doesn't belong to people who are in America, who are Americans. They may be black, but it doesn't make them African. Africa is a choice, it's just a geography. So for me to call myself African, then make it equal to black then it means we are defeating the purpose of creating a number that unites us. Life can unite us. Pursuit of happiness can unite us. Liberty can unite us. When it's threatened, it means we have to resist it. And uh, if we resist it, anyone who threatens liberty, threatens humanity, doesn't threaten only 
African. So injustice is no face, there's no color, there's no eyes, there's no leg. So anything that is unjust must be resisted, not because the person who is resisting it is black. Do you believe there should be special trade concessions between uh, the black people of the world? No, I don't recognize a black person. I recognize a human being with a black skin. So if uh, there is a basis to trade, and if I produce a phone like uh, that, that phone, uh, it's, uh, it could be Samsung. This phone. <laughs> it, could, it could be Samsung. It could be Macamba. It, it could be Macamba. There's, there's nothing that should make it black for me to use it. So if it works, and it gives me the satisfaction, that should be sufficient. But the moment I start looking for a black uh, tomato, then I would have lost something. In the 1873, I'm sure you have set up a number of clusters. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have a trade cl a cluster? If so, um, what, what is the policy? What we say is that uh, in life, uh, like a country like Africa, there's a theater for you to live. You don't own it. One day you are in, one day. It's a linear relationship. Mm -hmm. So it may take 60 years, then after 60 years you leave it. You can't say, look, let me die with Africa. Oh, it's my Africa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so it belongs to all of us. Yes. So in terms of trade, we believe in market. But economic justice can be best be won by free men through a market system. Mm. If we create a market system, a network itself, it's just, a, it's just an idea that people can exchange. You have buyers, you have sellers. If people are deficient in knowledge, then people with knowledge will meet them there. So you have a platform where people can, can just uh, connect, exchange ideas, just as an end. Mm. Just to know each other, just to know what are the possibilities. And we learn a lot. Life itself is a, is a, is a, is a learning uh, laboratory. Mr. Maweri, you have interacted with, um, with many people, many influential people. Um, Stevie Wonder and others, took about, spent about 10 years campaigning for a national holiday, national recognition uh, for the late, the slain Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah. And this month is, um, is, um, is Mandela Day. Yeah. Um, do you believe that uh, these proclamations yeah. um, serve a meaningful purpose? Do you believe that they bring an impact, a certain impact onto a given society or a given people? Is there evidence of um, the benefit that's derived uh, from these um, proclamations? Yes. And, and if you can go on and that's dwell it. a bit on, on the Mandela Day. Oh, certainly, I think if you look at 1873, in memory, hmm. it's past. But imagine you have a memory bank. Mandela uh, once lived. And some of us uh, have interacted, we have met him personally. Hmm. But he's larger than life uh, for other people. And uh, what we see today in South Africa, uh, even just sitting here, uh, is a contested address. And the people who made it possible the people who refused to call tomorrow, tomorrow, because they knew that today is what was required. That spirit of Mandela is not dead. The spirit of giving uh, uh, yourself all that you have so that other people can have a brighter day, that spirit can never be erased. So when you look at uh, Mandela, it's not the physical Mandela, it's the idea that he represents. If you uh, uh, turn back the clock to 1963 and say, what is it that you remember this man for? It is that speech he made. And when he said, if needs be, I'm prepared to die. What was he prepared to die for? For a day in which one human being will not, will not be superior to another. That equality doctrine what informs the choices he made. And when he knew 
that there was injustice. He didn't say, I'm going to free people so that they have free food, no, or free education, no. He understood that birth does not give you any benefit. It gives you obligations. So obligations of citizenship also are associated with rights. So I can't have right, a right to do something and not have an obligation to secure it. We're talking to Mr. Mutuma, the um, founder of African Heritage and the patron of the uh, 1873 movement. Um, an outstanding, one of the world's outstanding uh, businessmen and original thinker. Um, a man who has spent a lot of time, a lot of uh, resources assisting uh, fellow citizens. If we come to to the area of politics yeah. and governance, mm. you you have the the American system, mm. which says eight years or ten years. Mm. Sorry, in the case of America, it's strictly eight years. Mm. Then you come to other constitutions, which will say um, an elected leader will govern for for, yeah. for five years and will have another term yeah. uh, uh, for five years. In the case of America, for four years, and and that's it. It's kept at that. Then you have uh, countries like Canada and Britain where there's no term of office. Yeah. And you have people like Tony Blair and Margaret Thatcher who were elected for three terms. And the father of the current Canadian president, Mr. Trudeau, I think had three or four terms. Yeah. Which system do you think is best suited yeah. for our conditions? I think the, the foolish people get foolish government. No, no, no. Uh, you cannot rise above, the, above, above the limitations imposed by the people who are the ancestors of your system. In the case of Africa, uh, the relationship between the majority of Africans and, Please, and, 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 and government don't wait for us and, and government uh, ought to be correctly understood. So if you are if you are would, you not like, a, would you like something to eat if as, not, as we if, talk? If you are not a may, I, may I save you dessert? <laughs> okay. <laughs> just the or, or, this one? Or, or, no, no. Uh, Which one? Or, did they, uh, just oh, orange just juice. orange juice? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Good. And the cameraman, gentlemen, try and in between see what you can do. It's uh, turning out to, to be a very interesting interview. We, we're not willing to let go. <laughs> yes, we resume our, um, our conversation with... Um, the warrior. <laughs> That's what we call you. You're waging battles at any given time. Yes, you were talking about governance and term of office. Yeah, that you, you can't expect uh, people who don't have a, a, an ecosystem that is friendly to government. Because government is really a creature of human beings. We need government to save us, to secure our rights. Hmm. But in the animal kingdom, there's no government. Mm -hmm. But there, you, there's life. And uh, uh, human beings need government because they have rights to secure. Because if I take your life with no consequence, and if I take your property with no consequence, then effectively it means nobody will be working. Like in the in the animal kingdom, there's no storage, there's no warehouse, there's no supply chain. The uh, storage is in the tummy. In the tummy. <laughs> so whatever I can, <laughs> I can consume. But it's only human beings who serve and create value for their successors, for themselves in a rainy day. I can even put a granary, I can put a silo, I can store value, I can put fuel in a tank and I can draw on it, mm. I can manage it. Money, money. That is what human beings are. But if money. all those things are not there, I don't need a road if I don't have a car. So coming back. And then, so when you have our own system, I can't say two terms. Even if I have two terms, Mama. it still will not cure the problem. Mama. Because a good government only is good to the people who need it. People who don't use government, it's like a road, you build a road or a hotel, nobody sleeps there. What do you call it? 
So do you do you have a third way? The third way is to improve literacy, which is what we say in 1873. Mm -hmm. Equip people with knowledge. Mm -hmm. Inspire them. They get angry. Mm -hmm. When they get angry, they know there's a better life. Mm -hmm. So why would I why would God give me life and want me to be to be uh, struggling? Mm -hmm. to be poor. That's because someone in government is with a crazy idea of what life should be. So the, the only literate people will always have literate outcomes. Are you advocating for a qualified franchise? Not qualified, uh, universal. But it is those, those who are in the ivory tower who think they are rich, they will discover soon that the law of gravity will, will, will reduce them to the common denominator. So if you want good things, you also must secure the rights of the weakest person, not the strongest person. Hmm. So the law protects the weakest person. So that's why we are investing in understanding the rule of law, hmm. property rights, because the opposite of uh, poverty is not wealth. Hmm. How do you explain, um, <clears throat> Mr. Mawere, the, the sad, sorry, the sudden insurgents of China in um, in Africa. But it's not China. It's just uh, opportunities. Opportunities uh, are neutral. If China uh, stomach needs to eat gold, the Chinese will find where the gold is. If it's iron ore, if it's coal, if it's manganese, uh, whatever it is, if it's That's copper, it's not about China. But when China was sleeping with the communist ideas, the Chinese factories were not there, they were not running. But today China changed the ways, the ideology. Mm -hmm. Then every Chinese now appears to be a, a, an imperialist. Because there is something to do. Chinese in mainland China didn't have to. They were condemned by this uh, Maoist uh, uh, idea that you can rise up above a farm and uh, you are in a farm. So you attribute that to the change of policy in, in China, China yeah. mainland China? Yeah, mm. it creates an appetite. Does it necessarily make Chinese special friends of Africa or they are just businessmen and investors like anybody else? No, anyone who sees Chinese in a human being is lost. The value does not recognize at a transaction point if it's cash and carry. Do you care what the, whether the cash is Chinese or, or European? It's, it's value. If I go into a shop, I must have the cash equivalent for me to carry the goods. So at the end of the day, the goods that I carry is exchange of value. But if you are sleeping and you, you don't know what to, how to negotiate, you can't cure that disease by denigrating the Chinese. Because yeah. the Chinese don't come, they don't come for a picnic, they don't come for, for no value. They come because there's something to be done. And if it will be done in Africa, they'll be there. And if there's something to be done in South Africa, they'll be in South Africa. You worked with a, <clears throat> a, a recognized, a world-class financial institution. Uh, so you understand the ways and means of uh, conducting business, be it in the Western Hemisphere, in Africa or the Eastern Hemisphere. Yeah. Would you say there has been meaningful you know, change by our people in a manner that we we conduct a business, the way that we embrace investment, or um, there's still a lot to be done. In, and if there's still a lot to be done, what is it that we haven't done and which we are not, we, is we are not doing correctly? I, I, I think Nash was talking about the bridge to a prosperous Africa. The title is The Bridge to a Prosperous Africa. Africa. Can I yeah. get it online? Yeah. Yes, you can get it online. On Amazon. On Amazon. How much is it going for? Seven dollars. Seven dollars. Yeah. This is a must. We, you need to buy this. You need to read this. Just go over this book again. But uh, 30 years ago, the first mobile phone call was made in the unlikely place. Uh, Zaire. Zaire. Mm -hmm. By a company, uh, through a company called Telesel. Mr. Mikor Waitare. And Joe Gatti. And 30 years later, if you look at the penetration, you look at uh, the changes that have taken place in Africa, 
uh, through this technology, the evolution, the innovation, the invention, and the utilization of this technology for good. That shows you what is possible. In South Africa, Vodacom, MTN, they were born in 1994, so they don't have a history of apartheid, they don't have anyone to complain about, so nobody can say economic freedom. But look at what has happened in the case of MTN. It is now uh, uh, operational in almost in more than 22 countries. Mm. Look at Vodacom, a combination of uh, Voda, uh, Vodafone and Telcom, 50-50 uh, uh, arrangement, where today you find that uh, Vodacom is operational in other countries. Mm. And look at the world that has been created in the name of mobile. Look at the jobs that have been secured because of mobile. The convenience. The convenience. And look, if this industry was under the control of government, just imagine what the 30 years would have been. Uh, it would have been 30 years of squandered opportunity. 30 years of uh, people being thrown out of jobs, people being thrown in jail, in jail, mm -hmm. people being uh, fleeing for their lives, mm -hmm. and uh, yet the customer will be will be the victim. They more than 80 percent of African people mobile phones. So if you with those connections, some even have more than one mobile phone. So that's what it should be. The marketplace. Who has paid for all this investment? Is the poor people of Africa who use the mobile phone? The subscribers. The subscribers. Yes. And who was protecting them? In Zaire, there were only 40,000 lines for 40 million people. And the government says we are doing a good job by denying people the right to communicate. So now, we have now seen what is possible. If you can do it with no balance sheet, Miko, uh, Joga, they didn't have a balance sheet. No. Nope. Uh, Stride Masiwa, no, no, no balance sheet. Sekulu. Mo, Mo, Mo <laughs> Ibrahim. No balance sheet. Uh, Margaret and Uga, they all went into Stride Masiwa and even tell us of Zimbabwe. Mm. And people were given license. Where was the balance sheet? No balance no sheet. No inheritance. Nothing. But through that uh, frequency spectrum, today Africa is better for it. And that shows the power of the market. So if you have any doubt about what the market is, can, is capable of doing, look at the mobile. Okay. So, Mr. Mawere, as we as we wind up our interview, he, you are saying the security and the continuation of our um, our rights and good leadership. Not Don't, leadership. Good followers. Good followers don't necessarily rely in, 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 in certain individuals, but lies in, in good education. Lies in individuals taking responsibility, not assuming that the neighbor is going to make the mistake to you. If you don't like something, do something about it. About it. Don't okay. wait for the neighbor. Because the neighbor may disappoint you and keep you stationary. So your life will be affected by those neighbors you think are the better angel when you are the angel if you were to write your own if i was going to write a quotation yeah. about you yeah. if you were going to write a quotation about yourself mutumwa mawere in inverted commas what would it be who are you what do you represent what have you seen that works what have you seen that fails what would you say in a few words that you would want to go out there as a quotation to motivate, motivate and inspire people? That knowledge holds the promise. Knowledge holds the promise. 1873 members and followers and the um, Dr. James Makamba Facebook page, you have been extremely privileged today to hear from this, the depth, the well of knowledge and experience, Mutuma Mawere. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs>